All right, everyone, welcome back to CIS 125. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos, and the class is being recorded for playback. So we're on lucky week number 13 of the semester, and uh, that means the things are very quickly coming to the end. We'll look at the syllabus one more time, and then um, today's material. So I think they've started to, assistance, if you could look this up, I think um, enrollment has started for the summer, maybe, or do any of you know off the top of your head? But uh, enrollment for the summer, I think, is coming very soon. So that means you want to enroll in CIS 126, which is part two of this class, CIS 125. Um, so in the um, catalog, we have CIS 125, which is the beginning introductory concepts of Adobe Animate. And then in CIS 126 part two, it's continuing. We've done a lot of focus on drawing and that sort of um, artistry in drawing and animating in this part of the class. There's still more to learn and there's gonna be more advanced things of drawing, painting, coloring, animating in part two of the class. But then also the big focus of part two of the class is how do we use Adobe Animate to create games? interactive projects. Animate can also be used to make games that work on full computers or also mobile devices. So Android or iPhone, tablets and everything. Basically, you can uh, eventually learn how to use Adobe Animate to make games that run on devices. That'll be in the summer. So obviously this intro class prepares you for that because in part two, it's much shorter. It's only eight weeks long instead of 16 or 17, whatever we have. And so this introductory semester will get you to the summer. And so we have here the note, open registration for summer starts on May 6th. Okay, so that's still one more month, not even a month, actually two weeks, three weeks or whatever. May 6th seems to be that's when we're going to start enrollment for the summer. And then there's all of the levels of, is it priority registration? Is it returning registration? Etc. So your registration date might not be exactly on that particular week, but shortly after that. And you want to enroll in part two of the class because it'll go on to have you learn more about um, drawing and painting and animating, but with a focus on um, interactivity in games. Before we get to that, we still have to talk about things in this class related to well, if you ever looked at the syllabus and kind of added it up, you will see that there's always basically been two weeks on a topic. Uh, one week there was three, and then one week there was one, but we usually have two. So we have uh, drawing. We had a couple of weeks on drawing in the beginning, then a couple of on backgrounds, uh, then story, two weeks, then uh, animation, we've had three weeks. And we've got music coming up for a couple of weeks. And then we're going to have plenty of time, plenty of weeks for the final project. Now, the details of the final project are still coming, the details. But you should know by now that the final project will be, you're going to make your own animated project. How long will it need to be? And what are the details? We'll get to that later. But you will need to create an animated project. It's going to have a character and a background and a story and frame-by-frame frame animation and music and all that good stuff. So it's uh, it's coming to see what the details are soon, uh, but uh, you should be aware of that, that that's coming soon. That's coming. And you see, we're gonna have plenty of time once the final project is revealed on the 6th, That'll be basically the details of the final project, and then you can start. And then the Monday of the 13th, it'll be completely work time. And then the Monday of the 20th, um, that'll be the final work time and then due as well. So that's what's coming. All the details will come soon, but everything that we've been learning um, is gonna add up to the final project. So all the drawing you've been doing of your original character and background and story brainstorming, 
and the animation techniques we've learned and the techniques of music that we will learn, all that is going to add up to an animated project. Um, I showed back like on week one or two, the work that students did on the previous semesters. I'll show that again when we get to the revelation of the project. But I think at this point, we will, uh, you know, we still got plenty to learn. And therefore, uh, I will show examples of previous students uh, a little bit later. We have sound and music to talk about. So to do today's work, this week's work, um, I'll go with the, I'll do the overview of the items here and then the lesson and then the assignment. So week 13 is our introduction. Uh, as I was showing on the syllabus, we usually have two weeks on a topic. So it'll be two weeks on the sound topic or so. So sound is the next piece of the puzzle in making an animated project, a, a movie, a video clips and such. You might have great visuals, but if you don't have any sound, something feels like it's lacking, unless of course you're doing it on purpose. Like what was the name of that one movie where no one could talk, where the monsters would get you? You had to be very quiet. Things would get you. What was it called? I can't talk or something like that. What's that? A quiet, a quiet place. Yeah, exactly. So um, they did that on purpose that they couldn't talk because and the and the sound. Yeah, there you go. A quiet place because that was a choice. Um, I never saw it, but I heard you couldn't talk in that or something, and then the monsters would get you, something like that. So um, what will make this any project more complete is when you have uh, sound, background music playing or sound effects at the right time and such. So we need to talk about sound this week. Once we learn the material, well, you're gonna have an assignment, which is a discussion type of assignment. We haven't had one of those in a little while. And with that type of assignment, you're going to post to the discussion board. We'll look at the details in a moment. And then uh, you're gonna talk about sound and music and then respond. Well, for this particular week, we're gonna talk about uh, how to find and use valid music. We'll cover what that means in a moment. Adding it to the project, creating layers that hold your sound and synchronizing the sound. So there's a bunch of little details to use sound in a project, just like we've seen details for all of the drawing and animating. We'll see details about sound as well. In the live session, I said earlier here, if you're in person here in the lab, either you want to open your classwork from last week, or if you don't have it, get a copy of mine from Canvas there. We just need something to work with. I don't want to start with an empty project. I want to start with something that already has a few seconds of animation. So either grab my copy from Canvas or open your uh, classwork from last week. As the usual, I'll put the stuff, the example stuff there. Resources. So I'm building from the previous weeks. I'm still showing the stuff from three weeks ago, four weeks ago, the animation stuff, the frame by frame stuff. Okay, the tween stuff, the frame by frame stuff, the stuff from last week, special effects, scenes, symbols, etc. And now for this week, uh, there's a there's a reading that you should do at some point. I'm not going to do it in class, of course. It's kind of long but you should read through this at some point, the official manual all about the music and how it all works, the sounds and how it all works in Adobe Animate, read that on your own. And we're gonna use something called YouTube Creator Music. So this is a resource that will uh, help us in adding music to our projects and it will be required for the assignment. I'll explain how it works soon enough. And then the assignment, I'll do a quick preview of the assignment at this point, and then it'll make more sense once we do the lecture. Basically, the assignment here. Um, so picking the perfect sound really enhances a project. If you have sad music playing, probably that's going to color what you're seeing. Even if we have supposedly happy stuff happening on screen, if we have sad music, that's either going to create a dissonance, a conflict, or it's going to enhance what's happening on screen. If we see sad stuff and hear sad stuff, it's a sad, it's a sad experience. 
if we see happy things and we hear happy things, it's a happy experience. So eventually, the final project, when we get to that eventually, you're going to need to have music in it. And to start to prepare for that, in this particular week, after we learn about YouTube creator music, you're going to select one of the many thousands of free sound uh, soundtracks that is available there. Find the one that you like there. Um, download it, download a copy of that sound file. We'll see how to do all of that in a moment. Here in Canvas, you're going to create a post where you write a one sentence synopsis of your eventual final project. Again, I still have to reveal what the final project will be, but that is far away. But that's probably going to be based on back on the week six first, first plot that you wrote or the week seven Drabble or a brand new idea, I guess. But you've already put a lot of work on a previous assignment, so I'm starting to think of a plot. So what's a one sentence synopsis of this plot that eventually you're going to work on? Tell us about it. And then, well, you picked a particular sound, a uh, soundtrack. Tell us why. You know, here's some possible ans uh, questions you could answer, but tell us why did you pick that sound? Is it, is it some sort of epic sound that you thought fit well with your project? Is it sad? Is it weird? Did you have any other second choice of a sound? And also upload that sound so we can actually hear it. You're gonna tell us about your soundtrack. You're gonna tell us about your plot, one sentence, and then we're gonna hear it. We're gonna hear your sound that you chose. I'm still gonna explain a few things, so just one moment. So after you do that part, you're then also gonna to respond to classmates. And after you kind of read what they wrote about their um, plot and heard their sound, you're gonna respond and say why you thought it was a good choice, or maybe why it didn't quite fit, that sort of thing. So um, it's basically about adding that little bit of extra to an animation because not just the visuals make up a project, but the sound. And again, once we do the, the rest of the lecture, I'll come back to the assignment for some of the details. But in order for this to make sense, let's do the main lecture and we'll come back to the assignment. So the main lecture, what we're doing here is let's open up Adobe Animate. And as I said, either open up your classwork from last week or open up a copy of mine from the live session screen. My example here, I'm opening up my work from last week, just to remind you what I did, what we did last week. There was this thing that we did in class, the big adventure, it was a focus on sort of the scenes, the camera, moving around a little bit, the end here, and then it kind of ends and then it fades in and such. So we did that last week. I want to add music to this. I want to now add a soundtrack. So we need to talk about all the little details that we need to do in order to add sound. We also need to talk about, well, in the assignment, I had said a certain keyword over here somewhere. Um, appropriate or whatever I called it, appropriate or correct or whatever I said, meaning for a legitimate work of animation, you have to pay attention to things like copyrights. You can't just take your favorite sound off of Spotify and then add it to your project. That, in short, is illegal because that is a copyright violation. There's a whole discussion about copyrights, but basically you would believe me that if my cell phone were on the table right here and then you saw someone walk by and then take it, you would believe that is stealing because it is my 
property. I bought this. I paid whatever hundreds of dollars for this. And someone walked away with it. They stole it, obviously. But that's the same thing if someone stole my uh, book that I wrote, my poem that I wrote, my song that I wrote, my art that I created. Non-physical things are also property. They are intellectual property, not physical property. And so if I write a story and I put it online, automatically it's your property. Automatically the laws of copyright give you the right to copy that idea, that story, that work. So obviously you'd be bummed out if you uploaded an amazing story and then you saw copies of it on someone else's website and worse yet, copies of it that someone else is selling. So music and such, visuals and such also automatically are copyrighted. As soon as you create something, you publish it, put it out there to the world, you own it automatically. So that, you know, the brand new cool Taylor Swift song, you can't just take it and put it in your project. It is owned by Taylor Swift. So this is why I'm saying for the assignment, we're going to use specifically, and I'll show you in detail in a moment, the YouTube creator music system. YouTube gives you a library of thousands of song, songs that you can use for free no problem for your projects. They're not exactly like the big famous songs and soundtracks from Lord of the Rings and such, but they are equivalent. Let's say from Lord of the Rings, they have some very epic grand music when they are uh, traveling through uh, blah, 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 the mines of Moira, whatever. So let's say I wanted that grand epic music from Lord of the Rings and I put it in my project. Copyright violation, illegal. Instead, I could use uh, an equivalent epic song from, for example, YouTube Studio Creator Music. It's not exactly the official Lord of the Rings music, but it's similar to it. And so this is a whole big topic. Copyright-free music. Yes, exactly. If you further search for copyright-free music elsewhere, that is the same idea. However, for the assignment, we're going to use specifically the YouTube Studio Creator Music. That's a good point. This is not the only place where you can get free music. But for the assignment, so everyone's kind of doing the same thing, we're going to use specifically YouTube Creator Music. Or there, it has put out a bunch of music that is copyright-free, that is legal for you to use, etc. You might say, well, I on TikTok all the time, they're using all of this copyrighted music, and what's the problem? They didn't create that music. Or on Instagram, they're using this and that music and such. So yes, that's true. We're not in a social media class, so that's not our problem. But in short, yes, all of the people that are using copyrighted music in their social media basically are stealing it. Now, obviously, I'm not going to turn them in, but... Technically, they are doing it illegally, technically. Again, that's not the problem of this class. This class, you are creating an original animation, and you want to do it legally by using legal music. And specifically, this assignment, I'm pointing you towards one place that you can get legal music. Now, there was a note here. Um, Mario, maybe can you also put a link if you have a specific thought in mind, or any if, if any of you know it as well, a specific link of a website that has free copyrighted music, etc. There's a few of them out there. We're going to focus on, at the moment, on YouTube creator music, but assistance also, if you want to find examples of copyright-free music or um, public domain music and such, put it in the chat. The point of it is that there's plenty of it out there, but you have to look for it. You have to do the extra effort of getting the safe music, the legal music. I'm going to guide you to one in a moment. So there's a lot of nuance to this. This is a whole, you know, college major of copyrights in the U.S., copyrights globally. Uh, we're only talking about it briefly and why it matters to us, but it's a whole big topic. Basically, anything that is created, someone owns it. 
And unless you have the copyright to it or our license to it, you cannot use it legally. Uh, just like you would believe that you stole my cell phone, you have to believe you stole my music. So for this class, we're going to use YouTube, YouTube Studio. This is from YouTube. How many of you have heard of this cool new website called YouTube? See, everyone has. But uh, have you, did you know that YouTube also has their whole creator studio where you can upload YouTube videos or you can create content or you can become famous on YouTube? And that is over on studio.youtube.com. All of you take a moment to, on your, on your web browser, switch to your web browser, go to the website studio.youtube.com. And most likely, it's going to ask you to sign in if you're not signed in. And you can sign in with any existing YouTube account. Later, if you want to, you can create an account if you don't have one. I think you can use the school account. I think it'll work fine. But all of you should go to that link right now, studio.youtube.com. And... I think if you go to this link the very first time, it might ask you a couple of things. It doesn't exactly show it to me uh, the same as you maybe because I've already done this before. So if your screen looks a little bit different, uh, you know, raise your hand, we'll figure it out. But go to studio.youtube.com. And um, after you do that, it should probably do something like you should probably look something like something like that channel dashboard. Take a moment to do that. Studio.google.com. Try to log in. Let's see if we can get to the screen. Put a channel name. Heard change it, but eventually, eventually, when you sign in, studio. YouTube. Com. This is the YouTube Creator Studio, the dashboard where you will become a YouTube star. Like many platforms, can be used either as a consumer or as a creator. So I'm on YouTube all day long, consuming cool videos, watching a new one and the next one and the next one. I'm consuming. But most of these platforms also let you be a creator. You can create an account and then upload stuff to YouTube or Twitter or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. On all of these accounts, you can be a consumer or a creator. I have an account here as an example see all of these screens, we're not going to deal with this. If you take the social media class, CIS 257, which I also teach oftentimes, you're going to learn how to use social media professionally. You can get a job as a social media marketer. You can get paid to tweet all day long. You can get paid to TikTok dance all day long. You can get paid to do YouTube videos all day long by clients that need to hire someone to do social media right. All of you that have had some experience with social media, you can probably manage using some network, um, you know, what button to click, but using social media professionally, we have a class for that. We have a major for that. There's a college major to become a social media marketer, to become a social media expert, so that you can get hired to do social media for clients. It's a good gig. So we're not going to focus too much on the creator part of it. It's a whole other class, CAS 257. But in this YouTube studio, we should have here. Now, I've seen this. It depends on the account. Some accounts on the corner here, on the menu here, some of them say audio library. And some of them, I think, say, what did I call it here? Creator, creator music beta. Uh, I have different accounts that I work with. This particular one says audio library. Another one, when I wrote the assignment, it said creator music. So let me make a little change there because I think depending on the account type or some, some reason, some of them say audio library. 
some of them say creator music. Uh, what does yours say? Tell me in the chat. Uh, if you if you logged into yours, does yours say audio library or creator music beta? Tell me in the chat. As I make a change here, so so people don't get confused. Uh, it's the creator music beta, also known as uh, audio library. Same thing, audio library or creator music beta. Those of you that responded are saying audio library. Okay, I don't know for what reason. Maybe if you've got a new account, it's got the audio library is the older one. Creator music is the newer one. It doesn't matter which one you have. They're the same. Most of you are saying audio library. Okay, that's fine. So on the left side here, you have audio library. Click on that. This is where you're going to need headphones. Don't press play and blast your music throughout the whole room, please. You need headphones. We can give you headphones a little later. But uh, audio library. This is a collection of thousands of soundtracks that you can use for free on a YouTube project, on an Adobe Animate project, on a TikTok project, whatever. Audio library. I'm the only one that has music at the moment, so I will play this. I'm not going to play for you at home. Um, just imagine it. I guess I will. For those of you at home, I guess I'll turn on sound here. And for those of you in the classroom here, we'll, we'll hear a sound or two. So, for example, this first one. Okay, cool. So, we got the sound title, what genre, what mood, artist, duration, license type. So, go to another gen uh, random one over here. Putting on the Ritz. At the top, I can search, uh, search, search or filter library here. Pops up. Okay. Do you want to search by a keyword in the title, a genre, a mood, an artist's name, a duration, and then attribution? I'll get to these in a moment. Let's say I want to search for a genre, a style of music. Okay. I want something cinematic. Selecting that. You can select more than one if you want. Cinematic. So then it'll change over to some cinematic music. Let's hear this. I think that's too, I don't think that's too cinematic, but okay. What about here? Final Girl. Our bass choir. Very scary. So we have these uh, various genres that we can search for. And we also have moods. I'm going to clear the filter, click the X. I'll go over to mood. And this time I want some uh, angry uh, style music because my hero needs to battle the bad guy and they're about to lose and she needs to muster all her power. So how about over here? My way. Etc. So we can spend our time here looking for the perfect soundtrack for our project. You can click the little star here to sort of bookmark them to come back to them later, right? You have the music sound effect starred. You can star a bunch of these, bookmark them, come back to them later. You can um, search, or you can also organize these columns here. If you click track title, it organizes them alphabetically. You can organize them by duration. Maybe I need a certain length for these, for my project. Like, you know, I need a, my project is epic and it's 10 minutes long. So I need that 10 minutes ambient soundtrack back there. Organize also by the date uploaded. A real vintage one from 2013, A Walk Into Space. So, uh, music there. I have this project that I created last week, and it would be great to have some music 
playing on this, right? So um, I want to download the right music. Now, actually, let's pause here because, again, if this is so important, that music is important. And as I said, don't turn on your sound because it's going to affect everyone. Let's pause here. Who would like some headphones? We've got class headphones. So if you want to hear what you actually need to hear, does anyone want headphones? We can give you headphones. Come on, come here. Give you headphones. Yeah, when you plug it in, check your volume. It might be very loud when you plug in. <laughs> Uh, is here for people to get headphones or earbuds. All right, so on these computers, I believe you plug in there on the bottom left. Once you plug in, before you put your headphones on, uh, lower the volume here in the corner. It's probably going to be very loud. So plug in, then lower the volume. Click on the little volume icon there or on your keyboard. Uh, F8 changes your volume, I guess, or function F8. Right, so the point of this is we're going to find the perfect sound. Uh, we're going to take a moment uh, for you to browse some of these sounds. Once you like a sound, uh, there's a download button. Next to the download button, it also says license type. You want to look for the ones that have a little icon here. That's the YouTube icon, and this says license. You can use this audio track in any of your videos, including videos that you monetize. No attribution is required. Okay, this gets back to the idea I said earlier about copyrights. Um, YouTube is putting out here thousands of songs that are perfectly fine for you to use. There are a few, however, that are copyrighted. Therefore, you want to avoid those. You want to only use sounds that are copyright free. You can also check the check mark over here, attribution not required. With attribution required, oftentimes these are the copyrighted ones or the ones that you have to do a little bit extra to use them. If you select from the search here, attribution not required, it won't bother you with any that you need to do anything extra. And you can still also search for the various types of sounds. So take a moment to find a couple of soundtracks that you like and click download onto your computer. Give you a little bit of time five minutes or less, take a moment to find some sounds, download them. I'll show you what to do with them in a moment.
All right, one more minute. We can come back in a moment, but one more minute. Download at least one sound file, whichever you like. Download it, and then we'll go back to animate in just a moment. Right, let's say you've got at least one sound file. Here's what we do with it. We need to import it into animate, add it to a layer, and then set synchronization. I will say, and sound is kind of weird in animate until you get to the portion of adding code. Now, code is most focused on when you create an interactive project like a game. So let's say I've got a game, and every time I you know, press the button to zap the creature, it makes a sound, okay? Well, that has to be done through code, which we'll get to in part two of the class, CS126. So sound can play via code or in the timeline, but it's better via code, but we're not gonna cover code. Uh, so definitely pay attention to the nuance that I'm going to be talking or your sound will sound weird. The sound is better with code, but we're not covering code yet. So I'll explain. Uh, I'm going to go back to my animate project. I'll go back to scene one. Now I made a multiple scenes. We need to remember, okay, multiple scenes. I need to navigate between scenes and there's a couple of ways. I can open the scene panel and go to the right scene, or I can just use the little uh, drop down menu that's always available here. In the top left corner, there's a little drop down that lets you easily jump from scene to scene. Up here, for the scene panel, right? That's under uh, window and then scene, shift F2. That will also let you jump from scene to scene. So if you want the panel, that's the place where you add or duplicate or delete scenes. But if, if you quickly want to move from scenes, scene to scene, on the top left corner, you can do the selector up there too. From up here, you also have access to your various symbols in the library. So here's another fast way to get to specific symbols up here. So if I quickly want to go edit my torch symbol, my black square, whatever I made, I can easily click on that top left as well, and it goes to edit that symbol. So that's very useful. Easily move through scenes or also uh, symbols. Back on scene one, we'll go to the file menu. Let's go to file, import to library. This a while ago where we uh, grabbed a graphic and put it into our project. Well, we do that, we can do that with many types of multimedia, graphics, audio, video. We can go take another completely different video and import it into this project. We can have a video playing in our video. Let's say I've got a scene where the hero walks into a room and in the room there's monitors playing something. Well, I could grab a video off of elsewhere import it into animate and put that video playing in one of the monitors. That'll be later. But importing lets you work with a variety of multimedia. Or to library. It tells you down here, open any kind of openable file or open any kind of sound file or JPEG file, etc. But the default of open any openable file is good. I click download and probably these things downloaded to the downloads folder. 
So on the left side of that open window, most likely these downloaded there. So find your downloads folder on the left navigation here. There's the three of them here. You can select one of them at a time. You can click one, then open, import the next one, import the next one, or open them all at once. If you uh, click on one, then control, click on another, control, click on another. You can select multiples at once. On the Mac is command, click. But instead of doing it three times, import all at once. You can, if you download it more than once, you can control click each one to select them and then open. Importing. Imported to the library. So I will go to the library. We have the graphics we created previously. We've got the new sounds that I imported. There's a preview of them visually right there. There's a visual representation of the sound. You know, there's a little bit of a light part, a low, low part of the music, and a loud part, low part, loud part. This one's all mostly loud. This one's mostly soft. Imported these sounds into my project. Just like any other item in the library, I can delete it. I can put it into a folder. I can rename it. I want to change those sound names. It's not changing the original file. It's just changing the name of it in Animate. If you want to, you can double click, change the name. Just have a little preview play button over here. Select a sound, press play. Click stop. So Animate, it's interesting. Um, Animate is one of my favorite software. It's very powerful. It lets you do a lot. But it really lacks with sound capabilities. For example, I'm seeing that Moonlight Sonata is a very low volume. I want to raise the volume. And we're going to have some basic ability to edit sound. Other software is much better for editing sound increasing the volume of the whole sound, adding fade in, fade out, adding effects, cutting out pieces. Animate does not have a very good way to edit the sound, just to basically to play it. So this assumes that you import a sound that is ready, basically. And other software to do that, if you have already the Adobe software, it should also come with an audition, Ours doesn't, apparently. That's annoying. Uh, Adobe Audition. Audition. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like we have Audition installed on these computers. We're not going to need it, but this is just letting you know that um, Adobe Animate, it does not have a very strong point of editing sound, but Adobe has an app for that. It's Adobe Audition. There's also alternatives like Adobe, uh, like Audacity. That's another famous audio editor. It's not from Adobe. It's their own thing. We're not going to need it at the moment. We're going to assume that our sound is good. And we will have the basic ability to raise and lower the volume. But if we wanted to cut out a part of it or to mix different parts and such, that's for other apps. All right, I have some sounds, some soundtracks in my library. Next step, I need to create layers, one or more layers for the sound. Let's go back to scene one, frame one, and we'll create a new layer. Call these things whatever we want, but for example, oh, it's soundtrack, compared with a sound effect for later. Soundtrack. This is the music that will play behind the scenes as my project plays. One recommendation with working with sound layers is always put them at the bottom of your layer order. You don't have to put them in any special place. 
but it is recommended to put it at the bottom because again, it's kind of like background music. You're not going to see anything, but it's background music. And when you have 20 layers to work with, sometimes it's easier just go to go all the way to the bottom because I know I put my sound at the bottom and it's there. So recommend it to organize yourself sound track at the bottom. On frame one of my soundtrack layer, if I switch over to the properties, the properties of that frame currently say sound none plus other things. But frame one on my soundtrack layer, sound none. Well, now I'll make it say one of my sounds. Now that I've added it to the library, this knows that I've got, in my case, three to choose from. Select one of them. Now what my uh, layer shows is the visual representation of the sound. That wave form, the loud part and the quiet part, I can start to see it on my frames. Jump to a different sound file. See the sound file there? Those are the beats right there. This other one, that's the lowest volume. See it there. So anyway, the um, important part here is that we have a layer for a soundtrack, or when we get to it, a layer for a sound effect. Right, a soundtrack is something that's always playing. The sound effect is something that plays at a certain moment. That rock falls down and it makes a sound at that moment when it hits the ground and then it stops. So we can have different layers for different soundtracks, sound effects, however you want to organize yourself. Soundtrack. Then we have these effects. We'll come back to these in a moment. These are very important. We'll come back to that in a moment. If you've got your headphones on and now you click test my movie, check it out. Perfect synchronization of my amazing project here with the evil wizard and the castle and scary. Restarts over. Plays in a loop. So, if you listen carefully, the sound is looping on top of itself. The default behavior, as I said, sound and animate is kind of weird. The default behavior is that if your project loops over, it's going to play the sound again, even though the last sound was still playing. So, be careful here. If suddenly you start to hear the sound on top of the sound on top of the sound, it's because the default behavior of synchronization is event on the event that the video is playing and at the event that it gets to when sound starts, it'll play the sound. Our project went to the very, very last frame. It looped over back to the beginning. There's the event of playing to the beginning. It plays it again, even though it was already playing it. And I made us too dumb to know, hey, stop the sound before I play another sound, unless I make the change. Or later when we get more advanced, unless I write code to know how the sound should play. Well, instead of the default of event, if we select uh, start, this is another way to synchronize the sound, that it should not uh, overlap music. If one has started, Another one won't start until this one ends. The default is event, which is usually the worst one. Start is often a good one. Let's compare that one.
So as it started over, the animation, the audio keeps playing. Only one copy of the audio. It didn't stack on top of it itself. So start synchronization is a good one to pick, usually, besides event. Get the other two in a moment. But here, I have this, uh, we're seeing also the default behavior. Scene one has the soundtrack layer with my music. Then we go to scene two, and scene two doesn't have a background sound layer, but the previous music keeps playing. In my case, that's what I want. I want this one music to keep playing throughout my whole project. Okay, that's good. But what if I have the idea is I want the sound, I want the music to change on scene two or scene three. Okay, that's easy. In a different scene, I need a new layer with a new soundtrack. So let's say I want that scary music on scene one, but then I want different music on scene two. Okay, let's go to scene two, make a new layer, call it background, you can call it background one, two, three, whatever. I'll call it just background. A new layer on scene two, I put it at the bottom. Frame one, there's no sound playing here. My properties of frame one, scene two, background layer. I'm going to select my other sound. We have event, we have start. I leave it on the default, which I already said is the worst, but I'm going to leave it here just to show you. Play it. Great remix right there. But we've got both the sounds playing at once, which I probably don't want. I don't want the classical music sound be playing at the same time that the dance sound is playing. Okay. Well, as I said, event is often the worst one. So pick event there. I'll click start. That one seemed to work previously, so I'll pick it this time. Still the same thing, both sounds overlapping. Um, again, animation or uh, sound is kind of weird uh, until you get to the code portion of things. Um, because we can write some code where it detects, oh, the previous sound should stop and this new sound should start. But again, we're not dealing with code at the moment, we're dealing with what we have here. We have also um, stop. I don't think this one's very useful at the moment either. Let me remind myself. I never use stop, but let's just look at stop. It's not even playing it. So in this case, it doesn't matter. In this case, the best that we can do is this. Um, if I go back to scene one, I'm going to set my synchronization to stream. This is going to be the best one for us at the moment. Stream is going to be perfectly synchronized with your frames. In my case of, frame, of scene one, I'm going to play a hundred frames of the first sound. Then it'll stop because it played a hundred frames of the first sound. In the castle, scene two, I'm going to select for that sound stream, and it'll play, in my case, 75 frames of the sound. So now we're tying in the sound to the frames. Let's see the difference there. I set both of them to stream. Let's see the difference. All right, there's no more overlap. That's good, but now we're seeing other problems that we'll fix, of course. We'll get to the break in a moment. But now we're seeing other problems. 
So again, sound is going to be a little bit tricky um, to get it perfect, but we'll cover getting it perfect or getting to our first break here. So the point for the moment is that we got legal uh, copies of music for the assignment. Again, I'll come back to the assignment. For the assignment, we're going to use the Adobe, uh, the uh, YouTube audio library. We have plenty of tracks to choose from. We saw that we want to file import to library. We've done that before. And then something new, we make a layer and we select the particular sound and then we have to deal with what synchronization and other things, which we'll cover right after the break. But here's where we're at at the moment, starting to add the new element to our project so that they feel like much more like a real project, like a real movie music because having it all silent before was okay. Now with the right music, it's even better. So let's take our first break here. It's one o'clock. We'll be back at one, uh, it's one, it's 101. We'll be back in 10 minutes. We'll be back at 111. And then we will continue with working with sound in Animate.
for one, I don't know if you've all gotten this message, but let's hear this. Far from finishing the lecture, so let's just finish the lecture and then we'll go home. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you feel because uh, of your own safety you wish to uh, do as you wish, I would not fault you. So, yes, if you wish to be safe away from the power outage not near you, you could go home if you wish. I'm going to continue with this. Gonna, it's going to, we're going to end the thing very soon. I'm just going to finish this. I'm going to keep recording it too. You won't miss anything. So yeah, those of you that are there at home, uh, you're okay. But those of us here on campus were battling the um, uh, power outage demons. So uh, basically we're going to, I'm going to finish the final things here. It's not actually too much more. Um, and if those of you that are here in person want to stay, you can stay. And if not, you can go home. But it's we're very close to finishing today's material. For the assignment. So um, the final things is that uh, the synchronization of it all is what you have to worry about when you put your music. Because if you put stream, stream is one of the best ones, but it only will play enough of the soundtrack that you tell it. On my frame one, on my scene one, it played about 100 frames, which is fine. But did you notice there was a lot of silence before the music started. Maybe I wanted that on purpose because there's silence, 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 and then music starts. Actually, I can now also hear it while I'm editing. And I press play here. So if you set it to stream, you can all you can see it and hear it while you're editing it in anime. If you set it to anything else, you won't be able to hear it. Maybe I want this, that I don't hear any music until I start to see stuff. Maybe I want that. Maybe I don't. Maybe I do want to cut out a little bit at the beginning before the music, so that the music can start faster. Here again is where animate is kind of lacking in very powerful details. Um, but we have a little bit of this. We can edit it right here. Basic edits. Under the sound, we saw sync synchronization but then we've also got here fade in fade out change the left and right channels not too not too powerful but next to it edit sound envelope that is basically a simple way to cut out at the beginning or the end a little bit of sound so i want to cut out a little bit of silence i want the music to start right away when it's dark and then continue as I fade in. So I need to cut out about one second. You can do that by selecting and clicking the edit sound. You get again, this, this is a screen that's been here like literally 15 years in Animate. I've been involved in either teaching or working with Adobe Animate for like 15 years. And this screen still looks the same as it did 15 years ago. So one day they'll update it. It's so basic here. Uh, you have this edit envelope. You got to zoom in, zoom out, view by time, view by frames. Okay. If I zoom out, I start to see a little bit more the sound. And it's so funny. Look at how this button overlaps that button. You can tell that they forgot about the screen here because they want you to use Adobe Audition, not the tools in Animate because they're so basic. If I zoom in and zoom out, okay. Um, if I set this to frames, then I can kind of see, okay, if on, if on my screen, I've got frame 25-ish on my main timeline, my music starts at frame 25, my animation starts at frame 25, I can see in the edit envelope that it's approximately frame 25. Okay, time-wise, it's one second, one and a half seconds. I think the frame counter is better than the time counter. The point of this then is I need to cut out a little bit of silence. And it's so unintuitive. What you do is 
you put your mouse on this left side right over here in between the left ear and the right ear in between here, there's a little slider. And if you slide that slider over, you're gonna cut out all the part that's gray. You're gonna cut out silence until there's actual audio. All of this will not play. It will start to play at this point, which is also weird because it's also changing the frames over here. I don't know what they need to at least change this on the next version of Animate. Don't change that frame there. I want that frames to be the same as my timeline. There's nothing we can do about it. So anyway, I'm sliding that over to cut out some silence. Click OK. And so instead now, see how that kind of scooted over? The sound is going to start. The silence that was there was gone. The sound, sound is going to start right away. It's going to be black at the start of my project as I as I animated it, then the fade. Okay, let me play that. Zip right away. Animation in the next part. Okay, and then very literally, it cuts off literally right there at exactly 100, and then it goes on. This is one of the things that when you work on the music stuff, you're gonna have, you're gonna have to juggle this how much time do I have it actually on screen? How many frames? Do I want a little bit more sound, a little less sound? I add more frames to the soundtrack and it will play more. Play more. Have also the ability to fade it out. Effect. However, it's not gonna fade it out right here. I want it to fade out from frame 95 to 115. I told it to fade out. It's gonna fade out at the end of the sound file. That's annoying as well. Well, I can go back and edit the sound envelope. I could zoom out, zoom out, zoom out as much as possible. I could go to the end, see it did fade out. It's showing the fade out happening, starting at full volume, fading down to no volume, you know, fade out, et cetera. Um, the point is, if I can cut out at the beginning stuff I don't wanna hear, I can cut out at the end stuff I don't wanna hear. So at the end, I can drag the slider over. some amount to zoom back in and I'm gonna have to play with it how how long how much now if I do a fade out because I've told it this is the amount of length of time now do the fade out It wasn't that great. I have to play with him more, edit the end of it, change those little boxes. You know, I can drag these around. So once I figure out how long I need the frames to be, then when I do a fade out, for example, then I can start to play with these little dots here. It's going to fade out from here to here. fade out, still have to work on it. This is the part again, yeah, this is, it's one of the worst features in animate. All the animation stuff is amazing, but then the audio part of things, it does take a little bit of trial and error, but it's all gonna be right here within your sound. Usually you're gonna set this to stream and then you're gonna edit the envelope. Um, the biggest challenge is gonna happen over here in my case. I have castle in my case, I have the castle that is first an establishing shot. Let's look at the castle. But then remember what we did? We duplicated that scene. And then on the duplicate scene, I start to do the camera stuff. Well, visually, it's going to flow from here to the next scene. 
scene looks the same, but the next scene needs the background layer and the sound and the synchronization. So possibly in this case, because I want my sound to continue into two scenes, maybe stream won't be the best, maybe start. I do want the sound to play on the first scene and then go away, then the new sound to start on scene two and continue. And then when it loops over, it'll get weird, but I don't care about that because for the moment, I'm just gonna assume I'm gonna play the video one time through. I don't care about the looping stuff. We'll deal with that later with code. Let's see if this is better. I don't care when it when it loops over, but in the main animation of it, okay, it's fine. I still need to go in and cut out some silence here. I'm gonna edit the envelope here, remove some silence at the beginning so it gets to the good part faster. It's gonna loop onto scene two. Good, that stuff happens. I want a different sound when the wizard appears. Okay, now I have to deal with turning off the sound and putting a new layer. Again, it's kind of a little bit of a to do, but that'll be why this week. Uh, you're not doing anything with Animate. I'll get back to the assignment in a moment. This week is about introductory concepts, which then you can start to play with Animate on your own. Um, but the big idea is you need to import sounds, create a layer for them, set a synchronization, play with the sound envelope, just kind of play with how it all works and then reason it out for yourself and just and just play with it. Let me back up to the assignment now that we've actually done some things. So again, for this week's assignment, it's this, you have to post and reply. Don't forget to do the replies. You won't get full credit if you don't do the replies. So once again, from the YouTube sound library, audio library, you need to go into YouTube. Everyone gets a free account. If you log in with your school ID, go to audio library. Find one sound file that you like, download it. There's the free, there's the paid, there's the copyrighted. Get the free one, of course. Download the sound. Create a post in Canvas here. Explain your plot in one sentence based on week six and week seven assignment. One sentence. Tell us why you chose that sound file. Did it speak to you? Was it a really cool sound? Did it, do you think it'll work really well when your character appears? Tell us why you chose that sound. Do you have a second choice? Upload the sound. There's a button right here. When you start to do your reply, there's going to be a button right here. It's this little sound one. Upload media. And it'll just say, okay, select your MP3 that you downloaded off of YouTube, upload it. So you're going to write your part. You're going to upload the actual sound so we can hear it. And that'll be part one, where you post. Don't forget to do to part two, reply to at least two classmates. Listen to their soundtrack. Read what they wrote on their one sentence plot. And then write a, hey, that's a good sound. I think it works really well with your idea or that doesn't quite sound with what you're saying. What you're saying sounds kind of sad, but your sound is too happy. You know, just give your thoughts on what you would recommend if you like it or not, respectfully. Question. Let me, let me check right here. Uh, what is a one sentence thought synopsis for your final part? Yes, that is one sentence. Yeah, these, exactly. You can start to use those and whatever you wrote there, you have to figure out how can I turn that into one sentence? So yeah, let's keep it focused on just one sentence. Even though we have all these big ideas, let's see if we can do a one sentence plot for this. Yeah. 
and then you and then you t tell us about your sound and how that relates. So, because of the uh, crisis happening, we'll end in a moment. But that's the idea. We have the little tip of the iceberg of how do I add sound to my project? You know, you know the basics of it. We still have more to talk about, like sound effects. Cover that next time. What about lip syncing? What about having my character talk? We'll cover that next time. Sound effects, etc. This is just the introduction about um, where to get sound. So remember, for this assignment, you want to use YouTube Studio. Don't use anything else. Thank you to the assistants that also added these other examples of sounds. You can also go to these other places here. For the assignment, you're going to stick with the YouTube audio library, but here are some great places for future assignments. And um, you're going to kind of on your own see how sound works now that you learned about putting it on a layer, dealing with a synchronization, maybe adding effect, maybe editing the sound, a type of synchronization. Oh, there's also here repeat. I didn't even mention that, but, you know, repeat my sound or loop my sound, how many times to repeat, you can play with that as well on your own. You don't need to create anything in Animate for the assignment. It's just about picking the sound, telling us about it, writing your plot, one sentence, and then replying to two classmates. And things at this point, and we can't really have lab time, I guess, because we all have to go home, and we'll be back next time. And of course, if you missed any previous assignments, make sure you still turn them in. I'll still accept them. It won't be full credit, but at least getting some amount of points instead of zero is much better. So wrap up week 13. Hey, it's unlucky week 13, and look what happened. We have to go home early.